Hello, everybody. It has been a little while. I have been on vacation the last two weeks, and that's why there hasn't been a new video in a little while, but we have some fantastic news. We are finally monetized. I said this on my community post, but I know it's not the biggest thing in the world on the grand scheme of things, and compared to lots of other creators, I don't have nearly as many subscribers as they do. But this right here means so much more to me than I could ever explain or put into words. Thank you so much to everybody so far that has supported me and subscribed. And I would massively, massively appreciate the continued support. So enough rambling. Let's go ahead and talk about Stranger Things. I am at a loss for words. Stranger Things Season 4 is the greatest redemption story of the modern day cinema era. Just like No Man's Sky is probably the greatest redemption story in video game history, this is the movie equivalent of that. If you saw my last Stranger Things video, you know that I loved the show so much after the first two seasons, and I absolutely despised Season 3. I said in that video that it remains to be seen if Season 4 can resurrect the show, at least in my opinion and time will tell if this show is truly going to die or not. And boy oh boy, we got another absolute classic. Stranger Things Season 4 fixed so many, and I mean so many, of the problems that I had with Season 3. After Season 2, you could tell that the story was a natural end. It had come to the perfect, natural conclusion. Season 3 felt as though the Duffer Brothers had no idea what to do and scrambled up a smorgasbord of terrible and slapped the Stranger Things Season 3 label on it. If you want to hear my full thoughts on Season 3, go check out the other video I did. But basically, I hated Season 3 for two main reasons. One, because so many characters were written horribly, and two, because the story was dumb and ridiculous. I hated, and I mean I hated hated Hopper in season three. Hopper was my favorite character from season one, and they completely butchered him to the grave in season three. Every redeemable quality and everything I loved about Hopper, they destroyed in season three. I hated Max in season three, as I thought they made her have a complete paradigm shift in personality in like, what, six months? From a really enjoyable character to an annoying teenage brat in season three. I also hated how all of the Russia stuff was done in season three like most people did. I thought it was way too over the top, way too unbelievable, and I didn't even really like the way that the mind flare was done in season three. Now, every single one of those points that I just said were completely fixed in this season. So before I talk about what I did not like about season four, and yes, there isn't a lot, but there is some, I wanna talk about what this season did right and how it saved the show. First off, this season went back to the way it was in season one. It went back to its roots, a series that felt like it was based off of Stephen King novels. It was creepier, it was much more nerve wracking, it was dark, and people got messed up in this season. This show went back to what made it popular, not being all campy and bright and crazy and over the top like season 3 was, but dark, suspenseful, and bloody. The characters did not have magical plot armor, and I am so thankful for that. I complained how in season 3 it felt like all of the characters were just invincible. But this season was different. The entire season, I thought Steve was going to die. Eddie, of course, did actually die, and Max got brutally wounded. That scene where Max was in Lucas's arms at the end was heartbreaking because Max was just there, completely blind, and all of her limbs were broken. She was just there, suffering in the darkness. Finally, at long last, the characters do not seem invincible. And that might be partly due to the fact that they are all older now, which is totally a valid point. But regardless, it's nice to see the characters not have magical plot armor. Another thing that I loved about this season is just how thought out and well planned this story was. It shows you how the Duffer Brothers sat down, 
gathered themselves after a horrible season and crafted an extremely well thought out story. Now, obviously, I think we can probably all agree that when the show started, they did not intend the Mind Flayer to be connected to Vecna all the way through. It is really rare that a franchise could go back and tie in something that massive scale, but they did it very well and it works really well. This season had so many plot twists throughout the show. You could tell that this story was thought out from the beginning and that there was a consensus effort to make this season of Stranger Things the best season of Stranger Things ever. Like I had mentioned before, every single one of the things that I thought they did wrong in season three, they beautifully fixed this season. I would like to interject this point real fast. I absolutely loved the decision to keep Joyce and Hopper's storyline completely separate throughout the entire season. While Mike and Will's gang did pretty much nothing in the first part of the season, I actually liked having them split up too. Now, I complained about that very thing in season 3, but it was mainly because it felt like some people in the pairings of all the different groups that were split up in season 3 did nothing and had no purpose with the story. Now, you could argue that Will and Mike's crew didn't really do anything, but I will argue that they actually did something very important in the final part. From Will inspiring Mike, and then Mike inspiring Elle, and then getting Elle in the tank, and then Elle saving everyone, I'd argue that what they did was actually pretty freaking important. It felt like every single person had a legitimate thing to do, and a large piece to contribute to the story, and that was partly due to the fact that the episodes were so gosh dang long. Now look, I know that some people don't really like that the episodes were this long, but I absolutely loved it. It gave the show time to flesh out each of these characters, and it gave something, it gave time for the characters, each and every one of them, to do something. It is so impressive that this show did not crumble under the weight of itself after producing this much content. There were no plot lines left untouched, and everything tied in beautifully at the end of the season. Another thing that they fixed from last season was specifically Hopper and Max. First off, I want to talk about Hopper. Now, I loved all of the Russia stuff, and I know that's an unpopular opinion, but here's why. Because... Hopper was a, like I have said in the past, a miserable oaf in season three. It felt as though season three ruined my favorite character. But in this season, Hopper went through it, man. He got beat up and suffered through so much. Hopper had that cutting edge to him again. He wasn't silly or stupid or foolish. He was resourceful, he had courage, and he got brutally beat up time and time again. And he showed us the same Hopper that we all saw in season one. Now, I jokingly said that all that Hopper went through was punishment for how bad of a character he was in season three. And I loved just seeing how depressing and sad his storyline was at times. Hopper was amazing. Also in Hopper's storyline, I also thought that Murray was the best that he's ever been in the show. And while Joyce wasn't really a main focus like she's been in the last few seasons, I thought she was great too. The other character that I specifically loved was Max. Wow. Max was my favorite character from this season, and I am stunned that I am saying that. Sadie Sink is an amazing actress and has a very bright career ahead of her because holy cow was Max amazing in this season. The decision to make Max more quiet, more to herself, more overall depressed very much so how she was like in season two, was honestly a great decision for two reasons. One, because Sadie Sink really got to act the best that she's ever acted, and it made people resonate with her character so much more. Episode four, or the Kate Bush episode, was probably the single best Stranger Things episode ever, and it really made you feel sad for her. She wore her emotions on her sleeve, and you could see what she was feeling without ever having to say anything. And as I have said before, that is when you know 
you have a fantastic actor or actress. I was surprised that Max was a massive focal point of the season, but I absolutely loved it. She had purpose, she wasn't annoying whatsoever, and she felt more important than ever. The show focused on Max herself, Max Mayfield, the character, not Max the part of the group, not Max L's best friend, Max Mayfield, who she was, her struggles, the things that she dealt with. Max had the best redemption story of all of them from season 3, even better than Hopper's. She got so much screen time, and I freaking loved it. And like I said earlier, the scene where she got messed up by Vecna was gut-wrenching. So, Stranger Things season 4 had amazingly written characters all around. So many, actually, that I can't even touch on just how amazing all of the specific characters were but so many amazing characters and not a single character that got worse this season. Like I said, if you think back to every main core character throughout the season, they had something to do, they had something to offer, and they had a purpose in the show. If you take that character out of the show, a massive or at least say somewhat massive part of the story would be missing. This season had a storyline that was believable, it had plot twists everywhere, and it was so much fun to watch because of how much stuff we got to see. It was suspenseful, you did not know what was going to happen, and we learned about the mystery while the characters learned about the mystery. Not that we learned everything at the beginning and then it was the characters unraveling it, but it was just like season one was set up. We learned everything right alongside with the characters. The characters throughout the show constantly asked extremely reasonable questions that made you think, wow, this story is actually written really well. And arguably the best of all, they pulled an Infinity War. For the first time in the show's history, this season is clearly not made to be an ending. After each season, one, two, and three, everything was kind of wrapped up in a way. And while there still were other things going on at the end of each season, things that they possibly could build off of for future, each season did wrap things up in a way that if the show ended, you could see that being the ending. Season 4 ended with Hawkins on fire and the Upside Down coming into the real world as the main cast stared off into the danger they were about to face. Bro, if that doesn't build excitement just like with what Infinity War did, I don't know what will. There were also just so many specific things I loved about this show, and I just physically cannot talk about all of them, but this season did great where it needed to in the big moments and was a masterpiece. It is time for people to let go of the belief that the show should have ended after season one. You just cannot say that now because between seasons two and four, this show has made its money, and I will have to say, I cannot wait for season 5. Now, things I didn't like? Well, honestly, there's not that much. I mean, there were a few specific scenes that I didn't like where something stupid was happening, like the Russian guards in this scene having literal stormtrooper aim, or this pointless collar thing that had, like, no purpose because it didn't do anything, and I don't really understand why there was an emphasis on Brenner like unhooking the collar when it didn't do anything in the first place, but oh, whatever. Or just like small moments of stupidity, like Eleven, why would you turn your back on the guy who just told you exactly what he was going to do if you did the thing that you just did? Or why in the world are the four trusted people in here talking when the known repetitive traitor and scoundrel is outside working alone when he could just make a run for it or make a call. I mean, it's nothing huge. It's just small moments of stupidity, but these moments are few and far between and honestly just a nitpick at this point. Now, I would say the biggest plot point that I didn't like is I'm on the side of thinking that Dr. Brenner should not have come back. I know that they said he was alive in that scene from season 2 in episode 7, but even still, I don't like that from season 2. I thought that he should have remained dead, because 
a Demogorgon jumped on top of him. Now, I want to just think through this real fast. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but when Hopper and everybody are fighting the Demogorgon, the Demogorgon literally latches onto a dude's face and just absolutely devours it. So why the heck did the Demogorgon not do that to Dr. Brenner, but instead just jumped on him? I don't really know. But honestly, it wasn't too bad to where I'm going to not like Season 4. I'm just not going to like it, and that's just that. They pulled a lot of nostalgia from all the other three seasons in this season, and that was just one point that I didn't like compared to so many things that I did like pulled from past seasons, so it's all good. In summary, this season was amazing. From the characters to the story to seeing so much of the Upside Down and its backstory and seeing how everything in the history of Stranger Things connected so well, Stranger Things is the greatest modern day cinema redemption story ever and far and away the best Netflix original ever. My faith in the movie making and TV show industry has, for the time being, been restored. With Star Wars and Marvel, my two favorite franchises for most of my childhood, going in directions that I just do not like as much, I needed a franchise I could latch onto as my favorite. And this season let me do that. Now you guys know I am fair and I criticize where criticism is due. But I thought this was excellent, I loved it, and I am so proud of the Duffer Brothers for coming back and making something after they made something so horrible in season three. I cannot wait to see what happens in season five and Stranger Things, thank you so much for giving us this amazing show. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, please do consider subscribing. Like I said, I would massively, massively appreciate the support. Until next time, have a great day.